see this. That's more for me. <laughs> I get it. I thought ahead. So, um, welcome everybody. How are you? Good. Are you ready to have a good day? Yes. If not, I hope to make this somewhat entertaining for you, but also of value because I do value your time. You're here and you can be doing a lot of things at 6 o'clock at what is that? Tuesday. On a Tuesday night. So, um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here. And I think your future self is going to thank you as well. Because a lot of you are in different aspects or different seasons of your life in the process of potentially getting licensed as a real estate professional. So congratulations for that if you've committed to it, only because I can pick on you and you're right here. Some of you may be here and learning to see if this is something you want to take the leap of faith and do. So wherever you're at in that, I'm going to trust that you're going to get value from this. And if not, um, it wasn't my fault. Tammy put this together. <laughs> I'm just kidding. This is, so really, what, what this is for, because I think we can all be real in this room. And do I have permission tonight to be real with you? Is that okay? Because I've known sometimes for not having a filter. And I think, and a lot of times that can get me in trouble, but a lot of times it actually serves you better. Because sometimes we just need people in our lives to call it straight and for what it is. And especially the job of a coach is you got to know that person's going to be looking out for your best interests, even if it's hearing something you really don't want to hear, but deep down you know it's the truth, right? And so with that being said, I put this together. It's actually funny for me to see this come full circle because I was a team leader with Keller Woods for three years prior to becoming a coach, and that means nothing to probably many of you. I don't get wrapped up in titles, but Tammy, with the craziness around her neck, <laughs> she is our team leader in Fort Mill. And what that is, what you say, is pretty much like the CEO of the office. You, you grow the office, you manage up the staff, and that's really the, in a traditional business, it's like the CEO. Okay? And so I was that for three years, and I wrote this blog. This was actually came from a blog that I used to recruit to. And I'm like, gosh, I, I think it's good. You tell me after tonight. Um, but I thought it was good. I'm like, what in the heck can I use this for? And it just occurred to me, maybe I could create a class off of it and really assist those of you who are maybe in class right now, pre-licensed class, where you're hearing things like a whole bunch of legal jargon, right? A whole bunch of legal mumbo jumbo. I think that's on the next slide. There we go. And if your experience has been anything like mine, it doesn't exactly tee you up for success. Now, I'm not coming from a place of victim mindset here. Again, just speaking truth. I get the state has certain laws and, and legal requirements that they want you to be knowledge about to keep you out of realtor jail. I get that. It's good. Yet I also think it's part of the issue, and I'll try not to get on too many rants tonight, but I do think it's part of the issue when we hear stats, for example, that suggest that within two years, eight out of ten of you will no longer be in this business. Eighty percent. That breaks my heart. Seriously. And I think there's a lot of factors, one of which is the pre-license process is, is not giving you a dose of reality of what it truly takes to be successful in this industry. And all of a sudden, that window closes, and if you don't have a sense of urgency, your bank account's going to give you that sense of urgency, and then you catch yourself saying silly things like, i got to go to a real job. This is a real job. Are you showing up and have a, a solid routine and a habit like you did when you were maybe working in corporate America or whatever? So anyway, I'm going to talk a lot about that tonight of what is it really like, because this is not HGTV. This is not easy. This requires work. This is going to be some of the hardest work, probably, that you've ever done in your life, yet some of the most fulfilling from so many levels, including financial. Yes, you can make a ton of money doing this. But Gary Keller, our founder, um, says on the front of his book, regardless of what you do, where you end up in real estate, do yourself a favor. I don't get royalties off of this. Go purchase the Millionaire Real Estate Agent book. That is the Bible. Some of you are shaking your heads because you know what I'm talking about. I don't care if you end up at XYZ Realty, go buy the book, study it, read it, listen to it, again and again and again. Because that's going to give you a roadmap to be successful and treat this and run it like a business. And that's what I'm going to come at you tonight, if that's okay, is give you some honest insights of what I believe. These are my opinions, but I've coached a lot of agents. And these are the common trends that I see that make people successful or at least tee themselves up for having a really amazing career. So you're not a statistic of 8 out of 10 who are no longer in the business in two years. Okay? I think we need to get it out there and talk about this more. So 
Um, that being said, any questions, anything before I do roll into this, because I want this to be participatory. I always have to say that word slow. <laughs> participatory. Um, and dialogue with me, okay? Ask questions. It's not rooted tonight if you cut me off in the middle of a sentence and say, Jake, whoa, 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 can you backtrack? I can talk a lot. If I'm not careful, I'll just go on and on and on. Now, I try to be succinct when I speak as well, but you with me? Stop me, ask questions, participate, give me some feedback, especially some of you in the room who might be uh, realtors, especially newer in your career. Sometimes I'm just going to look to you and say, can I get an amen, Joe? Okay, come on, brother. You know I'm speaking to you. <laughs> now, that being said, I have earned the nickname of uh, Pastor Jake. I've gotten, uh, an, I'm a life coach, apparently. I'm a therapist. I'm a counselor. And I also earned a nickname, Tot Tot, which is funny to me because I say a lot of times, time on task over time. So one of the agents that I coach is called me Tot Tot. All right, I'll go with that. Because I do believe a good coach sounds like a broken record on purpose. It's the same thing. My job is to though, is to repackage the same thing because it got boring and stale and unsexy and present it to you in a different form. And you're like, oh yeah, I like that. So anyway. All right, so uh, what does is, what is Mr. Tony Robbins say here? He says, success leaves clues. Have you ever heard that before? Do you believe that? I also believe failure leaves clues. We can learn from things if we're willing to reflect. Go figure out what someone who was successful did and model it. Improve it, but have their step, or I'm sorry, learn their steps. They have, they have knowledge. Um, back to Gary Keller, because I went on a moment there. On the front of his book, he says, it's not about the money, it's about what the money can do for you. Or actually, the book says, it's not about the money, it's about being the best version of yourself that you can be. Okay, so what, what's interesting for me and people like Joe who are coaches, we have a front row seat of your journey. We are business partners. We get in the trench and roll our sleeves up and we help you get what you want to out of this vehicle called real estate. And Tammy said it today in our, in our team meeting, isn't the purpose of business to fund the perfect life. So what is your big why? What is your perfect life? And if you're choosing real estate as that vehicle to get there, rock on. Let's go for a fun ride. Okay? But it's not about the money. If you're in this for the money, we're going to peel back the layers of the onion a little bit more and figure out what is it really about. Is it experiences? Is it getting out of debt? Is it being able to tell somebody, I told you so? I, I don't know. It's, it's different for everybody, but that's that's one thing I want you to, uh, or rather we'll be talking about as the night goes on. So any anything specific you guys want to hear tonight, what are you expecting out of this? What are you hoping you hear? Reality. Reality? All right. Reality. Yeah. Just, reality. just so I can keep it real. Yes. Cool. I like that. Best ways to get started for a new agent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's really what this is designed for. Not just ways to get started, but also how to create a sustainable business. Wouldn't it be amazing if I could wake up every January 1st and not have to look back and say, and by the way, I do curse a little bit. Um, how in the hell did I do that? And how am I going to do it again? Right? I'm telling you right now, regardless of what Cousin Eddie, and I'm going to use Cousin Eddie a lot in my examples because of Christmas vacation. Um, I don't care what Cousin Eddie says. Oh, you've got that real estate thing? You're crazy. It's going to take you six months to have your first paycheck. Wow, 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 wow. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you right now, it is possible to have a sustainable and a predictable real estate business. Wouldn't that be cool? Mm -hmm. Just as many of us, you, are showing up to work right now with a steady paycheck. There's comfort in that. Well, a lot of you are here because I'm going to assume you're willing to cut away some of that comfort and bet on yourself and stop trading time for money. Can I get an amen? Is that amen? Yeah. Okay. yeah. We're on Facebook Live, so I need y'all to like, amen. 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 Woo! All right. baptizing the night thing. <laughs> it is going to get hot up in here, so I'm going to turn that fan on. All right. So let's get going. Sorry. I'll, I gotta, I'll keep y'all here all night if I'm not careful. So the first one, here's the first one if you're taking notes. Yes, by the way, at the end, and I'm doing this not now because you won't pay attention to me, I will pass this out. I've got the top 19 things. But if you want to take notes, you may want to do that in your own scratch pads or whatever, but I will pass this out at the end. So start day one with the database, right? And there's some bullet points. I'm not going to talk off the slide the whole time, but uh, your database is your business plan. If you're a part of Keller Williams, you're going to hear this a ton. And there's a reason I started with this one, okay? So I believe your business will grow in direct proportion to the size of your database. Does that make sense to you? 
So why would I, I we're going to get into some lead generation conversations later, but I think a lot of times when people enter this business, they're, they're all gung-ho and, and they just pass their class and they, they know their customer service is top-notch. They've got a great sphere, but the reality of it is, I'm sorry to tell you, most people don't wake up every morning thinking about us. That hurts. What, what do you mean you don't think about me? Come on, I'm a big deal, right? Or, or you post one time on Facebook that I'm get, I just got my real estate license. Who do you know? Right here. And then we expect business to come to us. Now, again, I'm going to reference MREA a lot, the Millionaire Real Estate Agent book. And Gary, Uncle Gary, Gary Keller, smart fella, he tells us in that book, congratulations, all of you in this room, or potentially will be licensed, you just entered two businesses. Woo! You're in the real estate business. Yep, yep. Your license says so. But you're also in the lead generation business. That's what most people don't understand. I'm telling you right now, the quickest path to success, if I can leave you with anything tonight, is right here. Start with your database. Well, what does that mean? Who is it? Your database, and there's graphics and things from the book, but your database is anybody who, know, who you know, like, and trust. Start with the warm, fuzzy stuff first. Now, if all of you took out your cell phone, or had, I had to pull up your Facebook friends list, I'll bet there's hundreds, if not even thousands of people that you're connected with. But most often, when I ask this question of, hey, how many are in database? I'll get 50, 35, right? I didn't say who, who your besties. I said, who do you know? And the problem is most of you will cherry pick your database with the ones you're comfortable talking to. And you're going to say, well, Jake, I had, I'm going to ask, how many were in your graduating high school class? So you graduated high school. Well, I had 250 in my graduating. Okay. So you're telling me you don't know 250 people right there? Well, and here's the yeah buts. Yeah, but I haven't talked to him in 20 years. What do I say? Ah, da, 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 da. it's drunk monkey talking. Don't worry about that. We got scripts. We got you covered. Put their name down. So here's my first challenge to you right here on the database. Should you join Keller Williams or any company, I'm going to challenge you to have a database day one of at least 250 names. At least 250 names. Right now, I'm, I'm getting the get the energy, okay? Some of you are like, dude, I, what? I don't know you're from people. BS, number one, don't they say, correct me if I'm wrong, Tammy, on average, the average person knows 288 people by first name. It's true. Is that true? It's true. Okay, 288. So, my question to you as a coach is, well, are you average? So if the average person knows 288, are you average? Even if average in this case, I'll accept it. And again, don't prejudge. I didn't say who do you know in Fort Mill. I just said who do you know. Your mind went there, not mine. So if you're not from here and you're going to use that excuse, well, Jake, come on, I'm new. I don't know anybody in the area. I'm not going to buy it. Where'd you move from? And where'd you move from before that? You with me? Expand your thinking. Database is anybody, anywhere who, if I'm in Harris Teeter or something, I can say, oh, hey, what's up, Joe? Like, we at least know who, who each other are with me on this? I'm, I'm slowing this down. I am going to spend a lot on this because this is important stuff. So the best way to build it, look, it doesn't have to be sexy. It doesn't have to be overly techy. Some of the best ways is you start with a good old-fashioned Excel spreadsheet. Or some of you, if you like to write it down, start writing names down right now. Who comes to mind? Now we have memory jogger activities. You can Google a memory jogger activity. Who's the person that serves you your coffee every morning at Starbucks? Put them down. If you don't know their name, Ask them. Who changes the oil in your car? Right? Who's your doctor? Who, you, you start to open your, your world up. It's like, oh my gosh. I guess I do know more people than I thought I did. You with me? Mm -hmm. Okay. So 250 is my challenge to you. And I'll get into some math on this if I may. Tammy may disagree. You intimidate me, Tammy. But here's what I'm here for. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm totally deep. I'm totally deep. Yeah. I'm messing with you. Um, I'm just who I am. I can't. No. But here's what I here, so the million real estate agent book says a 12 to 2 ratio off of your met database. So that's a 17% return. So if you said, Jake, I have a thousand people in my database, what's a 17% return off a thousand? In theory, if you communicate it with effectively, you should have a predictable business that gives you 170 units every year. Now, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna lower that. Because I've heard rumor on the street, Millionaire Real Estate Agent number two book, can neither confirm nor deny this. I've heard 
Five percent is the new number Gary's using. I don't know if there's true. Ten? Okay. I'm use five because that's what I'm used to. So let's say some of you in this room, again I have ESP, are going to say, Jake, I want to make hundred thousand dollars. You know who you are. That's the number everybody picks. Because you want to say you made six figures. I get it. That's <laughs> just amazing. So let's just say six figures is in, is representative of twenty four close units per year. Two a month. Could you, could you close two a month consistently and there, boom, you, you just earn six figures? All right, so if, if, if I use the, the um, example of 5%, so I just take that and divide by 5%, and that gives me 480. There's a target number day one right there. I'm going to challenge you not to stop at 250. Get that sucker up to 480 people that generally know you. You have a name, you have an address, phone number, email, something that you can have some dialogue with them on. You with me? So right there, just from a sheer, all success in real estate is, is one big math equation, by the way, which removes the emotion from the conversation. So I can take that number and chunk it down to how many I need to add to my database per week, per month, per day. And right there, there's voila, number one, as a coach, I can help design your business plan of how many people you need to add per day to your database to close that gap. If you're right now at 250, and so I got a gap of 230, right? In what time frame do you want to close that gap? And now spit out to us if we chunk it down, how many per day, per, per week, per month do you need to add? I'm getting carried away on this, but it's database. There's four rules to database. Number one, have one. <laughs> you laugh. There's some of our highest producing agents in this office still to this day don't have a database. Imagine if they did, and they put that sucker on autopilot. So anyway, that's number one. Number two is communicate with, with it systematically. That's where the tools that Keller Williams provides you, like our uh, eEdge, which is um, our CRM, our database management system. It has drip campaigns and other things that you can take your folks and put them on little drip campaigns so we stay top of mind. And it's not annoying stuff. It's like, hey, buy, sell with me. It's like, hey, don't forget to set your clocks back. It's winter. Don't forget to do this for your house. It's, it's just touches. And then feed it daily. Feed it daily, add to it, communicate with it. It's not rocket science. And get this one. Uh-huh. Service all these that come your way. Can you believe that even has to show up on here? But it's true, because what happens is when you do get business and you're now successful, some people fall victim to their own success. And, and they let things slip through the cracks. They had somebody that says, look, I'm ready. And because you're so caught up in the other stuff, you forgot to service that lead. So it does deserve to be. That's number one. By the way, how do you see yourself? Be a service provider, not a salesman, salesperson. And we'll get into that later of understanding your value. So I'm moving. Number two is lead with revenue, not expenses. By the way, these aren't in any particular order, but um, yeah. Is it fair to assume? Do any of you just get what I get, which is kind of that impulse to buy certain things? It's like, oh, a shiny object. I want that, right? You know what I'm talking about. You're not going to admit it. So um, put the plastic away. Put the credit card away. Leave with revenue, not expenses. I get it's out of pocket to get licensed. By the time it's all said and done, maybe you've spent $2,500, $3,000 to get licensed. And that includes some signs and business cards. Okay. Now, from there, you, you will immediately be on a whole bunch of people's vendor call lists. You're going to get calls from Zillow and all these other companies trying to sell you on the latest and greatest thing that's going to lead to quicker success and make you more money in shorter time. I'm telling you, it does not take money to make money. It takes leads. And leads don't have to cost a lot. That's what Gary Keller teaches us. So if you're okay with not being lazy and looking for the easy route, and you're willing to get a little bit uncomfortable, which for many of you, that just means pick up the freaking phone or have a conversation, say hello to somebody. You don't need to spend money. Put it away. Don't buy online leads, guys. Talk to you. Talk to your database. <laughs> Aside from your Verizon cell phone bill, it doesn't cost money. Think. All right, so shiny objects. Avoid a myth. I already said that. It doesn't take money to make money necessarily. And I'm telling you, it's gonna, you're going to get bombarded. Some of you will see exactly what I'm talking about. 
You're going to go in this hall and, oh, well, if you buy today, you're going to get it at this discount. Come on. Don't do it. I had a real example of this. I was coaching an agent. Her name's Buffy. And Buffy was, uh, she did a great job tracking her business. You know, we, we had a sales spreadsheet where she would say, what was the source of the lead, source of the business after it closed and everything? So real quick, Buffy came to me one of our coaching sessions together. And by the way, she capped in four months, which means she's now earning 100% of her commissions. She's capped. So, <clears throat> and she was in the second year of her business. So she came to me and said, Jake, oh my gosh, I got this amazing idea. Sorry, Buffy, if you're watching this, by the way. Um, I have this amazing idea. I got this call, and I was offered to be in this magazine for this really high-end neighborhood. Now, this was like a 600000 into the millions neighborhood. And she was going to be an exclusive agent, exclusive realtor featured in this magazine with a half a page ad. Everything sounded good for only $400 a month. And so she's pitching this to me. She's got, actually, she did it prior to coming to me. But anyway, she doesn't need my permission. She's a big girl. Anywho, so we're going through this. I'm like, all right, cool. Tell me more, tell me more. And then I have her pull up, because I knew where this was leading. And I had her pull up her sheet. And I said, let's go through this together. Let's look at the sources of your business. Referral, database, referral, referral, social media, database, database, sphere. I'm like, hello. Every source of business you've had, all but one, and it was a sign call off of a, lead, off of a listing she had. That was the only one that was cold. Everything else was warm. You know what I mean when I say warm, right? It's from her warm sphere of influence, people that already know her, like her, and trust her. So I'm looking at that like, am I missing something? <laughs> like, you're about to go spend $4,800 for a year, because it was a year-long commitment, when everything else is pointing at where your business is coming from. Okay? And so I said, if you've got $400 really burning a hole in your pocket every month, either give it to me, or figure out a way you can double down and reinvest that into your database. What kind of a client appreciation party could you have pulled off for $4,800? You, you see where I'm going with this? So invest money, hold your money accountable. You guys work so stinking hard to earn your money, hold it accountable. And you should be looking at a minimum of three to one, I argue a four to one return. If I spend a hundred bucks, I'm going to make sure I get four hundred back. That's 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 part of this. All right. So what if that you know, generated three really good houses, and you then know, you profit fifteen thousand commission off of forty eight hundred? Great, right. it's worth it. Show it to me. Yep. Yeah. But at the time where she yeah. wasn't in, the, in the she's already capped. She has. <coughs> she wasn't at the time. Okay. She wasn't. Okay. Yeah. yeah. She wasn't. It just didn't make sense at the time. I'm not against it all together. If she can prove to me and she's going to show me her plan to do that, cool, cool. I'm not here to tell you what you can and can't do. But I'm just, as a coach, I have to I have to make it so you defend to me. Well, maybe, why her, a good maybe her database was in a different price range, and this is now trying to elevate her into another it's price not, range. It's not. I know way too much about her. Okay. Nice try. But I hear it. No, it's good. It's good. I'm, I'm just saying, saying since you don't that. have the friends or no. the, the contacts to get into one market, you try no. something to get into another market. That wasn't her issue. She had a very issue. But it was, is what I'm saying. Could that be, you know, and you could justify selling more. Maybe, houses. but why not take 400 bucks and go door knocker? That's true. Do a killer open house. I mean, there's so many other things. I just don't, I don't know. It's my opinion. I'm just not a fan of print. There's a lot of other things you could be doing. Joe. So, Jake, I'll speak to that. One of my clients in my coaching program, stubborn. Same thing. Yeah. Went and bought leads. Okay. So, it's great. What if you get 10 leads today that call you? What are you going to say? No idea. Yeah. So, going along with her stubbornness, this is what yeah. I did, is I gave her a crash course on scripts. Okay. She's fumbling through that. She hasn't converted one lead yet, okay? She's still spending money. That's not a testament to me. That's just a testament of she went and spent money, not a ton, mm -hmm. 300 a month, I think it was. But she's brand new. She just kind of likes it. Said she had that mindset of, hey, I have to spend money to make it. Mm -hmm. And so. Investments know, aren't bad. I'm with she, she's, trying, yeah. she's fumbling through. And, yeah. Yeah. you know, I'm trying to help her as much as I can as a coach from a yeah. script standpoint of, yep. you know, hey. You know, you're, if you're going to do this, you're not going to listen. Okay, we're going to we're going to go through yeah. this the hard way. It'll it'll actually make my day for yeah. to come back and say I told you so. Yeah. Cool. I'll, I'll happily yeah. be wrong on this one. Yeah. You know, but it's just my job to challenge the why behind they're looking to do that stuff. That's all. And of course, this is kind of my tagline for the locker room: is real estate's a contact sport. It's time to get your jersey dirty. Everything I do is sports analogy. So yeah, that's it.
That's that. Got to talk to people. All right, here's the next one. Number three is lead generate two to three hours a day. And some of you are like, whoa, bucko, what do you mean now? Come on. Did I just hit, did I just hit something with you probably? ESP, remember? When I just said the word lead generate, what did you think of? Be honest. Come on. What did you think of? Cold calling. Cold calling. What else? Not being able to Okay. Do those things work? Meet people. Those things work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I had a coaching session yesterday. I want to reframe the way this person was. It's just the word lead generate, literally prospect. I said, tell you what, just go lead generate for a relationship. How about that? If you want to establish a relationship based, referral based business, not a transactional one, then go lead generate for relationships if that helps your mindset here. But anyway, two to three hours a day is another drunk monkey thing. It's like, really, you're telling me I gotta go door knock or cold call and do all these things for three hours? Whoa, 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 let me break it down. First of all, if you don't have any business, uh huh. <laughs> do it all day, actually. So, so I gotta preface that, but here's my disclaimer otherwise. In the, I don't think that this gets talked about enough. When we say, for example, lead generate for three hours a day, here's how that actually breaks down. The first 30 minutes or so should be spent doing prep work. Right, so if that's getting your call list together or, or the flyers or mapping out where you're going to go door knock, it's, it's preparation. The next two hours will be spent doing um, the actual activity, making the calls, going to door knock, holding an open house, attending a networking event, whatever, whatever, whatever. That's lead generating, okay? And then the last 30 minutes or so would be spent doing lead follow up, or at least scheduling and taking what happened during that two hour block and now putting it on my calendar. But for a lot of people, it's, it's best on the follow-up part. Because it, it, lead, gener lead generation and lead follow-up, Tony Bacello, who's um, a big figure in, in our company, recently said, right now in this hot market, lead follow-up is as equal, if not even potentially more important than lead generating. Because if you're gonna put in all the work, you better have a system on the back end and a frequency that you're gonna be following up with some of these folks. And we have the tools to help you with that, but I'm just saying. So what does it even mean? It means go build a relationship. Go have a conversation, <laughs> okay? Don't let that business -y term intimidate you. I need you all to connect with this. Just be a normal human being, not a telemarketer, okay? Just no offense if you're, but a normal human being who comes from a place of contribution that just strikes up a conversation. Do we use scripts? Yes, we do. And that's another word that some of you have a funky feeling about when I say script. Well, Jay, you tell them more. No, it's not. No, it's not. I didn't say that. We all have scripts. Most of them just stink. And some of you are going to say, well, that doesn't sound like me. No, no, no. You're right. You're right. It's not your words. I get it. What that sounds like is somebody earning half a million dollars a year. So are you okay using the script until you're doing that? Okay. Cool. So anyway, they work. And the best script of all is saying hello. 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 How are you? Oh, cool. Now we're in a conversation. Awesome. So we said this earlier, it's you're in the lead gen business. Without leads, you don't have a business. I know you could be the best uh, customer service oriented realtor in the whole entire Charlotte board. You could know every single detail about every single home that's ever sold. But unless you have a client, <laughs> it's wasted. You have nothing, right? So you gotta find leads. So uh, there's Cousin Eddie. Hey, put Cousin Eddie inside. Don't let him say I told you so. Don't let it go so long because you're <laughs> unwilling to get slightly uncomfortable, many of you, and put yourself out there and make yourself vulnerable and be willing to fail forward. Look, this is not a, a business that you can learn from a textbook. You guys are figuring that out if you're a pre-license. This is a business that you learn, you learn by doing. And by doing, that means I'm going to make mistakes. And as long as I'm willing to look back and learn from my mistakes, I don't know about your definition of failure, but that's not failure to me. That's a learning opportunity. Now I'm better because of it. So don't fear failure um, in that regard. Consistent, persistent habits and commitment. I can go on a whole long tangent about these things, but I do believe after setting goals, my style of coaching, I want you to think big. I want you to dream big and, and not have limiting beliefs around that. Yes. But when the goal is set, I am more, as a coach, I am more interested in are you committed to the process? That is all I care about. And from thinking big, I want you now to transition that and think consistent. That's it. Think consistent. Consistency wins championships. Look at sports. Look at anything. Time on task over time. There it is. 
That's what I mean when I say consistent. My style of coaching is let's break it down to a manageable level that you can do consistent even when you've got tons of business going on. I want you committed to the process. The process is not fun always. The process can be unsexy, it can be boring, it can be repetitious, and guess what? That's what success is by most people's definition. And by the way, commitment, that's an interesting word. So commitment, my definition, is doing what you said you were going to do long after the feeling and emotion in which you said it has passed. Did you catch that? Let me, I'll say it again. Commitment, doing what you said you were going to do long after the feeling and emotion in which you said it has passed. Feeling, emotion. Mm -hmm. Okay. So some of you, for example, might get licensed, you, you're on a high, you pass your test, and you're like, I'm going to conquer the world. I'm going to go make six figures and then boo boo cousin Eddie. Well, what happens then when you hear the, the word no for the first time, which is the scariest word on earth for some of you? No. Or that door slams in your face, or somebody hangs up on you, or God forbid somebody don't return a text or a Facebook message. You know, mm -hmm. It's like, oh, no, you didn't. <laughs> so, um, that's what I care about. Are you committed to the process? Even when things aren't going your way. Even when you heard no, and it was an awful day. Every single phone call you made, every single person you talked to, nope. I'm more interested in how you recover on the backside of that. Are you still as committed to that $100,000 goal or dream or whatever it was you had, even after the emotion when you said it has long passed? You're over the honeymoon phase. Is that making some sense to you guys? Okay. This is big. Uh, yeah, avoid the real estate roller coaster. You can do that. Ups and downs and ups and downs. I can predict it. No problem. When you can track the numbers of it, I can see if somebody, when somebody is um, very busy servicing the existing business, let's say they have five listings and three buyers under contract, and then they're just so swamped with the existing business. When I see that happen, my eyes immediately shift over to my tracking thing and look at contacts and database and the drivers of the business. When this one increases, most of you, this other one decreases. You let your foot off the gas. So I can predict, because this is a business is a 90-day cycle, what I do today will show up in 90 days. Am I right? Wow. Like scary right. Scary. Freaky right. <clears throat> Trust me. There's laws of business, just like the air and gravity. We don't question it, but it exists. A business law is what I do today will show up in 90 days. Also, I can say what I'm not doing today will show up in 90 days. That's my point. So when I've got all this going on, you got to look up occasionally and say, oh my God, am I still lead generating? Am I still doing the very things that got me in this business? And if I'm not, I'm going to be paying for it in about three months. No checky. <laughs> and then you got to start all over. And it's that real estate roller coaster ride. Okay? I'm telling you. This is something to watch out for. 80-20 rule. I know some of you get as passionate about this one as I am. That's a game changer. Have you, some of you heard this? Parader's Law. Okay. Uh, if I went, I'm not going to do this. It's weird. But let's say you looked into your closet. I'll bet you that you wear 20% of the clothes in your closet. I'll bet you. If in your food pantry, I'll bet you eat 20% of the food in your pantry. I'll bet you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a, it's a principle. It's a law. So in real estate, not everything mattered equally. Gary Keller came up with a list of items that 192 tasks that a, a realtor would be responsible for doing. Is it any wonder you catch yourself saying, I don't have enough time in the day? Well, I don't have time is the, is the adult version of the dog ate my homework. I don't buy it. What that is, is a priority management, it's a time blocking man issue because you don't have clarity around the 20%. The law suggests 20% of my activities will result in 80% of my results. Not everything is weighted equally. So if a lot of you operate off of a to-do list. If you need help on this, check out the one thing, great book, to-do list. And if you're lucky, that goes into a should-do list. It's a little bit smaller, manageable. But then the extra step is what is the must-do list? Those must-do items. That is 100% what makes people with the same amount of time in the day more successful than those who are complaining that they don't have enough time. They understand this. Okay? 
What is that, by the way, in real estate? Gary Keller says it's five things. If you're looking for the real estate agent job description, here it is. Every day. Number one, lead generate. Number two, lead follow-up. Every day. Every day. Number three, go on appointments. Number four, negotiate contracts. And number five, believe it or not, description role play. That is your job description. If that is not showing up on your calendar, bold law, if it's not on your calendar, it doesn't exist, then you didn't go to work today. Because you decided to stay home and sleep in until 10 o'clock because you're finally a 1099 independent contractor and woohoo, I got freedom, flexibility, it's what I'm after. Okay, okay. Unfortunately, you choose that over working. But <sighs> I'm getting preachy. All right, break down three hours. I already did that earlier, so let's move on. We doing okay so far? Nobody's asking questions, so it must be I'm amazing. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> All right. I don't even know what number this is. Number four. Oh, my God. We got to pick it up. Find an accountability partner. Yep. Find an accountability partner. Now, this could come in the form of a coach. Some of us are coaches in the room. Uh, what do you think when you hear accountability? Bring it to Bring it on. Let me ask you a different one. Forget that word. What do you think when you hear the word discipline? Ouch. Ooh, so without fear, somebody says that. Get spanked or something? <laughs> what else? What do you, when you hear a word discipline, what do you think of? Challenge. Challenge? Okay, what else? Punishment. Punishment along the same lines? Stay focused. Oh, yeah, that's what I was like. Who said that? Thanks. Yeah. Somebody always says focus and self motivate, all that. You're all right, but isn't that fascinating <coughs> that I say one word and all of you have different definitions of it? So what do they say in bold, Timmy? Is it a word is nothing more than a label for an experience that we give it? Something like that. The label of the experience. The label of the experience. Think about that. Yeah, it's like deep stuff right there. <laughs> accountability. I, this is. I like to tattle on myself a lot. Accountability is one of those words for me. I'm just. I'm being vulnerable with you. For the longest time, um, I like my autonomy. I don't want to be told what to do. I'm, I'm not. I'm not employable. So if somebody that may future, I, I, you cannot hire me. I am not. I will be the world's worst employee. Okay. There. Now that we can get past that, because largely for the longest time I thought of this as micromanagement. Anybody with me? True. Seriously. Yeah. Accountability. Oh my God. Mm -mm -mm. I cringed at the word because I immediately linked it. I don't know where I picked it up from with micromanagement. So I shied away from accountability. And what I've learned is it's an amazing thing. I want it in my life now because I understand finally, largely by being a coach, accountable, accountability is me just holding myself or someone able to the things that they said they wanted to do. As a coach, my job is not to tell you what to do. My job is to ask great questions to help you self-discover what it is you want and figure out what the plan is so I can hold you accountable to those action items. And then I can hold it against you. <laughs> hey, remember when you said you wanted this and you were going to do that? How do you do it? <laughs> right? So anyways... Um, yeah, you need accountability partners. You need people in your life that are willing to step up and hold you accountable to the things that you said you wanted. That's the difference. And that's not micromanagement. And I'm glad I had that aha finally. No one succeeds alone. I heard that. Can't do this alone, guys. And that's part of one of my scripts that I have typed out is if I'm prospecting, lead generating my database, that's in there. Is I, I just call a spade a spade. Hey, friend. I understand one thing now after being in this business. Boy, is it relationship driven. And I understand now that nobody succeeds alone, which is kind of why I'm calling you in. So in the event that you ever hear of somebody looking to buy or sell and invest in real estate, it would sure mean a lot to me that if you connected me with that person. Can I count on you for that? Whatever, right? But I said, even in my script, no one succeeds alone. So I'm just throwing little, little things at you here. You're the average of the top five people you associate with. I believe it. That's scary, by the way. <laughs> Let that one sink in for a hot minute. It's like, oh my God, really? Who am I hanging around most of the time? And then, well, who's my spouse here? Okay. No, um, I'll bet you, most of you I don't know, but if I lined up your five best friends or whoever it is you hang around the most right here, and I went one by one and just had a little dialogue with each one, I'll bet you I could list some very, um, very close adjectives that describe you. Health. Finances, spirituality, relational, I could get a really good read of who you are through talking to them. Interesting. So if your goal is to earn, I'm just going to use it for tonight's example, $100,000, you're 
you better be hanging around people earning $100,000 or more. Seriously, they will lift you up by default. You'll be amazed at what that will do. If you want to make a million bucks, cool. Go hang around people making a million dollars. That's a big one. And sell their house. And sell their house. And investments. And, and. <laughs> so, hey, I get preachy on this. Some of you who attended the career night last week have heard me say this um, before. The two evils. I, I really believe this. The two evils in life are boredom and isolation. Some of that's biblical right there. Um, boredom, as I said a week ago, not too concerned with that. If you're actually plugging in and you're showing up and you're working, I don't know how you can get bored. I really don't. Um, every day is different. Every client is different. And oh my gosh, we get the privilege of working with emotional creatures. And it's just so rewarding and frustrating at the same time. Fascinating. Okay. Fascinating. Thank you. This guy right here is where I fear for you. I'm waving the towel. I fear for you. Hear me. Woo, woo, woo. Isolation. Comes in a lot of different forms. I really believe that is one of the greatest evils in life. Because if you drift away from the pack and try and run this business as a lone wolf, you will fail. I, I hope I'm wrong, but you will be one of those 8 out of 10 who are no longer in this business within two years. I'm being serious. Now, some of you, here's how it would show up, maybe. Some of you could be a victim of your own success. It's like, and I have this going on right now. I'm trying to re-engage some clients in the coaching program because of this. They had some quick success. Maybe they rattled off four closings, and I'm like, where'd they go? They stopped scheduling their one-on-ones with me. They're not attending team meetings. Where did they go? And now all of a sudden they think they're a real estate ninja because they got four deals under the belt, and they don't need coaching anymore. They don't need to go to that training. I've already been to that one time. Are you kidding me? Unless you can stand up here and teach that back so somebody in here could understand you haven't mastered anything so get your butt back in and i'm saying that because i care about you and i love you and your goals are too important to you and me for me to see you drift away from this coaching program that's what that conversation will sound like others will get so self-defeated because now you're going to start to compare yourself to your neighbor and all these people are whizzing by you and seeing the success and having appointments and closings you're like dude i'm just trying to get my first lead and now they're running laps around me. And so now I start to compare myself with them. And I feel about that big. And I say, you know what? You know, Cousin Eddie was right. I, this isn't for me. I'm just going to start drifting and drifting and drifting away until we get the email saying that you have left the company. And it's weird and disappointing at the same time that uh, there was a chunk earlier in this year where we lost some agents. I call it. I'm not saying like I'm. I'm just saying I said it. This person's going to leave, and sure enough, they did. You can see it, you guys. Sit in our seat for a little bit. You can see it coming. So if a coach or a team leader or somebody reaches out to you, an accountability partner, and says, "Hey, I see you drifting. Get out of your own way. Don't have the hallucination that oh, no, I'm not." If they're saying that, listen. Get get your butt plugged in. I'm gonna get it. <laughs> okay, are you guys doing okay? Yeah. It's hot, you need some water, we need a break. <laughs> Cookies? <laughs> okay, it's dinner time, I get it, I'm hungry too. But, all right, we're gonna keep going. Next one, whatever number it is, define your standards and systems. Mm -hmm. Check out that first line. Have you ever caught yourself saying that? Yeah. Oh, just, just, just call me anytime. It's all, just, just call me anytime. I'm here for you. Well, guess what? I can teach people how to treat you. I know what you're saying. You're coming from amazing intentions when you say that. But words matter. And be careful what expectation you set. Because all of a sudden now, if you're coming to me saying, Coach, dude, I got people calling me like 1130 at night, 6 o'clock in the morning. I don't have a life. I don't remember the last time I even saw my wife to go on a date night or something. It's little things like this one that'll take you there. You gotta guard your time and be sensitive to standards and systems. I kind of clumped them together. But yeah, you can't complain about the thing you tolerate. That's a tough one. I had to swallow my pride when I first heard this. I'm like, oh my gosh, I like that quote, but I hate it at the same time. You cannot complain about the things that you tolerate. Hmm. Where are you on that one? 
So be a CEO, don't fall victim to your own success. We just talked about it. Work-life balance, again, the One Thing book is a great, great um, book for a lot of many reasons. And in there, this is gonna look so weird to you, but bear with me. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm doing. How many of you have caught yourself saying, I don't, I just feel out of balance, right? I need more work-life balance. Has that ever, have you heard it? Have you ever said that yourself? Yeah. What Gary Keller argues in his book called The One Thing is that we're work-life balance itself is a myth, number one. We're in a constant state of counterbalancing. That's what he's going to argue. And that shifts your perspective on things. So if I was standing on one foot, on a microscopic level, you'd see my foot kind of doing this guy. I'm counterbalancing. Okay? That's the same point in life. He would argue this center line is a perfect world, whether it exists or not. Let's not get hung up on it. He just says, don't be in any one spot for too long. Sometimes this shows up as a day, a week, a month, a quarter. I don't know. There's no definition behind it. But be aware, oh my gosh, I've spent a lot of time at work. It's the summer. I'm over here. And then get realigned back over to the life part and reward yourself with a, with a week-long trip with you and your kids with no cell phone. You see, and then get back to work. You see what I'm saying? It's this constant zig and zag. And this right here is an important thing to understand when it comes to what, a, what are my standards? What are my systems? How am I going to leverage myself if I want to go on a vacation and actually enjoy it? Right? And you got it. I'll talk about that later. So remove past clients from your vocabulary. That must have been a note to myself. Oh, yeah. So I don't know the recent stat, but fairly recently said 88% of people when surveyed by NAR said they would have used a realtor again. Good job. Woo, you guys did it. 88%. 12% actually did. We suck it all up. Okay? You don't have to be. That doesn't have to be your story. But when we think, oh, well, so-and-so used that agent, and shoot, they probably own them. They're going to use them again anyway, so I'm not even going to try. But yes, there's a huge gap of opportunity in here even if somebody had used their, their realtor previously. But um, don't let that be you. So some of the system aspect of this particular success principle here is what are your follow-up systems and what are your systems in general that you can run a business? Any healthy business has a duplicatable, system is a fancy word for doing something more than twice that I need to create a system for. Systems can show up in a checklist. A lot of you are checklist people. That's a system, cool. Anything that I can have a duplicatable and repeatable process with is worthy of having a system for. It's just a fancy way of saying a way of doing things with a predictable pattern to it. So everything you catch yourself doing, if it's done more than twice, you need to create a system for it. Just a little, little checklist, a little something that you can reference to make sure it's boom, boom, boom. Um, oh, I love this one. I'll try not to get down it here, but let me just quickly say this. So on average, I don't know what the number is, nine, but let's just go with seven. And a person would move every seven years. <coughs> well, let's just run through an example. If on average, the first time home buyer is age 30 and they retire around age 65, that's a 35 year window. True? No math, no math major. 35. Divide by seven, because if they move every seven years, that's five opportunities, right? But really, truly, that's the night opportunity because if I help them buy their first home and throughout the life, because I want to be their realtor for life, flip, flop, flip, flop, flip, flop, buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell. That's nine opportunities on an average that you can assist somebody and earn commission from. That's my focus question as well. Knowing that, if you buy into that, what are your systems for? Because again, we get so caught up in the daily grind, and now, here and now, where's my next transaction going to come from, that we forget about, what about next year? What about in five years? So begin with the end in mind and set up good systems and or standards that you can have a duplicate for a process that will run itself with or without you. Drip campaigns and things like that come to mind. Okay. Next one, create your, you're like, what does that mean? Yes, I will explain it. Create your MVVBP. <laughs> that stands for your mission, your vision, your values, your beliefs, and your perspectives. Your mission, vision, values, beliefs, and perspectives. So 
Keller Williams, for example, a lot of you may have heard this, the uh, values, the value statement of, of Keller Williams is God and family first and then business. In that order. God, family, then business. In that order. Cool. If you believe in that, awesome. We're in alignment. If not, no judgment. That's okay too. But what is your mission statement? What is your vision? What is your values? It really forces you to think when you just can compartmentalize each one of those. And by the way, a coach will help you do this exercise. We've got some good stuff for this. Why is that important? Uh, Jessica, you were here last week for the uh, career night, right? So I don't remember the context we were in. Somebody said, I think, what are the two, what are the biggest mistakes you see agents make? Do you remember that question at all? One of my answers, I'll help you out here. One of my, thank you. One of my answers was they don't know their value. Of all the things I could have chosen, that was one of my answers. Two answers, that was one of them. Who I have the honor to work with um, comes up time and time again. If you catch yourself saying, well, I don't want to call my sphere of influence because Jake, I don't just, I don't want to come across as being a salesperson. I don't want to be slimy sales. It's like I gotta take a shower at the end of the day because I feel so gross. That's not a script issue. That's not a fear issue. That's a value issue. You don't know your value clear enough to articulate what that's going to be and how that's going to show up in your service. And it's my job to help you do that. It's Joe's job to help you do that. When you're clear about what it is you stand for and what your values are, nothing will stop you. I don't want to talk to people. I have a, sorry, a mission, an obligation, a duty, and a responsibility, in fact, yeah. to go represent my sphere of influence and tell them what I do for a living now right. versus letting them get caught with a week agent at a week time. Go ahead. Well, here's something to think about. I'm actually inside the locker room on Western Upstate yeah. uh, coaching the agents. So Joe's out, yeah. So by the way, Joe Wilson, he's a part of the locker room, locker room out of Western Upstate, South Carolina. So yeah. He's, so uh, <laughs> I'm teaching agents to take listings at 7%. Okay. You can imagine the drunk monkeys around that. Sure. They'll never do that. I think people have guessed. So when I was doing listings, I took them at 7% with a $600 admin fee. And you got listings, didn't you? Every time. Okay. So who says I value 6%? Who says it? So some agents, new, new agents, are taking listings at 7%. Sure. They're taking 4 and 3 on the buyer side. Because they ask. Because they ask. And they know their value to back it up. Right. So, so I'm just saying, if that's you, you got some, some, some limiting belief talk going on in here, it's probably boiling down to, I just don't have clarity around what I stand for and what my value is. What makes me different from the other 1.2 million realtors in this business. Mm -hmm. Because, yes, if I surveyed all of you, it's somewhere in that, if I had you list out the five things that you, you most represent, and all of you may say, I'm great at customer service. Cool. You can all share that as an answer. But the likelihood, what's that? Take me back to math class here. Is it expo exponents? Expo like right, 10 to the power of 4 kind of thing? Expo expo yeah, that, that one. Um, the likelihood of you having the same five as you and anybody else in the room is slim to none. It's all those things combined that makes you unique. You can say customer service and you can say customer service, but the other four items could be totally different, which makes you different. We just got to figure out what that is. Does that, am, did that make sense to y'all? Give me some. Okay. It's like, <laughs> you're up here. <laughs> Clarity's power. Law of attraction. I would rather get you to a point to where, like I said earlier, you could wake up every January and know, I got this. I just created a new bench for a level for myself that I can never go back to making less than $100,000. Laws of attraction sound a whole lot better than me, where instead of me having to hunt and peck for leads all day, every day, you could, on your choice, maybe get to a point in your business where it's so driven by referrals, cool. And you want to take the foot off the gas, cool. I think sometimes people get lost in the enamor of Keller Williams because we, we have some huge teams. People doing millions upon millions of dollars in production. When a lot of folks, I... I get to work with say, I don't want that, Jake. And they almost need to hear permission from me to say, that's okay. <laughs> I want what you want. You want to close five homes a year? Awesome. You want to close 500 homes a year? Cool. I'm not going to treat you any different. I just want to help you get what you want and why you want it. Honest to God. Okay? 
But wouldn't that be cool if I could have a business that attracted people to me because I'm such a value versus me having to necessarily go after them? The days of you having a cold call of FISBO or expired aren't necessarily forever, should that be something you choose to do, if you can do that. It all stems from knowing yourself and values. Um, could be used to compass for future decisions. Yes, if you do want to start a team, meaning hire an admin or buyer's agents and things of that nature, when you have that MVVVP figured out, it should be a, a compass or a measuring stick to say, who am I about to hire or attract into my world and are they in alignment and believe what I believe? And the song here somewhere, so it's later, but it's appropriate right now too. Simon Sinek says, who's an inspirational dude, the goal in business, check this out, the goal in business is not to do business with everybody who needs what you have. The goal in business is to do business with those who believe in what you believe. Whoa. Whoa. That's interesting. So, back to here. I don't know the number, but for number's sake, let's say year to date, 2017, in all Charlotte area, let's say there was 8,000 homes sold. Okay, well, really to me that's 16,000 opportunities because somebody's gonna represent the buyer, somebody's gonna represent the seller. Somebody, you have a calculator, somebody, real quick? So 8,000, but there's two sides each, so can we agree that 16,000 mm -hmm. opportunities for you? And you have a goal of 24 to make $100,000. What's 24 divided by 16,000? 666.666667. You did it backwards. Oh, I'm sorry. Point zero zero one five. So point zero zero one five percent of the market, whatever that tiny number is, is what I need to hit to hit my goal. Did you just have an aha moment right there? Mm -hmm. So do I need everybody to work with me? Is it okay if I miss out on a deal because I was competing against another agent? It's all baked into the numbers, you guys. I only need 24 people out of 365 days to say, Jake, I want to work with you. I like you. You're a value. Does that help? Does that I mean, try to give you nuggets. Something here is going to stick with you. So, <laughs> so anyway, this will we'll keep going. Social media, this one's obvious, you guys. I'm not going to spend forever today on this, but it is worth saying. Because some of you have this thing. I'm not saying you have to use social media, but in this day and age, if you're not in it, uh, you kind of just made life harder for you. That's all I'm going to say about that. It is low-hanging fruit. It is an awesome way to... Why is there a slash face? Oh, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't get it. What story are you telling, and who are the characters in it? So Facebook... Specifically, face, what is your profile picture? If it's you with the beer and weight, I mean, I'm just saying, you really want to attract a million dollar listing? I don't think so. Watch out. And then who are the characters in it? It's a book. What, what story is it telling? Okay? So if I'm partying with all my dudes in my pictures, I'm not saying you don't have a good time to do all that, but I have to, the minute you become a, a, a professional in this industry and you're working with the public, and we're very judgmental as a society, um, just careful of the image you're putting out there is all I'm going to say. Be you, be authentic, but just careful. How to use social media and how not to use it. There's definitely a way we train on this. I would say, generally speaking, have a 3 to 1, maybe even a 4 to 1 ratio of personal post to a business post. Don't be that agent, and I struggle with this too, but don't be that person of your friends list where they've forgotten who the heck are you. All I ever see now is all these open houses and buy, sell with me, and where, where did the person go that I, I like? Where's the picture of your kids and your dog? I mean, what happened to you? That's like some of us fall into, I, I came from network marketing as well, but a lot of network marketers kind of do this. Okay, they just vomit their product all over you, and you're like, unfollow or defriend. Right? Mm -mm. Okay? Don't be that person. Come from value, contribution, three to one ratio is usually good. Three personal posts, <coughs> business posts. Three personal posts, this is post. Okay. We're not having two separate. Yeah, different. Yeah, that kind of shows up in the training. Yes, you can have a business page. You can go gangbuster on whatever you want because I can like it or not like it if I want to. But I'm saying most of your business, honest to God, I think business pages are overrated personally. Your sphere of influence is connected with you as your name on Facebook, <laughs> not the business page on Facebook. Unless they're in the rare moment in their life where they actually give a rat's, you know what, that you're a realtor and they need you, 
They just want to be your friend. They just want to be your friend. And know what's going on in your life. And vice versa. So, I, I, just my opinion. Take or leave it. Go to training. This one's obvious. Be learning based. This is part of our class called Six Personal Perspectives. You're here tonight, which proves to me you are learning based. So, congratulations. You guys would not have taken the time out of your lives to be here unless you had this. Seriously, so awesome. Go to trainings. Stay engaged. I talked about engagement earlier. Good is the enemy of great. Why sell for good when great is still available? I'm just going to let that one marinate. I say that one. Long dramatic pause. Okay. <laughs> See? Yes. That one speaks to you. Why does that speak to you? Um, I've, in my adult career, have been successful to a point. I've done well, okay. but um, uh, I don't want to be too preachy. That's okay, right? But I have developed since I have started this journey. I have developed a mantra, and just about a year ago, I saw Hamilton on Broadway, mm -hmm. and there's a song called "My Shot." I'm not going to throw in my shot, and I'm going to propel myself past just being good this time. I I'm going to be great. That. Thank you for sharing that. That's awesome. That's all. And you know what's interesting about what you just said? Yeah, that'll um, it, this, this business is going to have so many other impacts on you personally, not just professionally. Just the last couple of days of my coaching sessions, this is coming up a lot for some reason, kind of where we're going with this conversation, where they can't believe the transformation they've had as a person, the growth journey they're on. God, this is an inside-out project that you're committing to right now. You're going to change in so many ways for the better, by the way. You're going to be a better parent, a better spouse, a better steward if you're in you know, the church, not the whatever. Um, everything, every aspect of your life because of real estate. And that's why I get so freaking passionate about Keller Williams because I don't, if it's me, because I understand that who I'm in business with matters and I surround myself with high thinkers and high achievers, I don't give a crap about what my split is. I don't even ask the question. I know I'll be successful, so why do I care if it's a 50-50 or a 100%? Like, dude, you're asking the wrong questions. Right? <laughs> but this is a big deal because Kevin Williams, in my opinion, uh, is, well, it's the opinion of a lot of people. We're the number one training company in the world across all industries. Number one in the world. Also just voted the happiest place to work. Yes, Sell that yes. by Forbes. Yes. Right? Yeah, yeah. if you lose yes. Yeah, you win. <laughs> That's it. So, you know, you're going to get personal growth training. You're going to get leadership training. You're going to get all different styles and kinds of training, not just the X's and O's of how to put together a deal. It's an inside-out project. So please, please know that. It's, it's I'll awesome. say this. The training is... Uh, you know, the, the coaching program is new new agents to some folks who are coming in at a million dollars and they want to break through their business, etc. I So if we have a deal going, and we say deals all the time as coaches, mm -hmm. okay, um, who's that other agent with? Are they with Kelly Williams? I can tell you they're not. Yeah, now, if they were, well, they're not. If they, and these are new agents with other companies, our agents are so well trained that even agents that have been in the business for several years, I can right. see the difference between KW agents That's right. and, and agents that have even been in the business for a couple of years with other companies due to training. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Thank you for saying that. Uh, those of you who might have went to college, all right, you went to college to study a very specific subject matter to get a degree in. Mm -hmm. So real estate's no different than that. And that's why I put this up on the slide is college education and real estate training, I, the way I see it's the same. <laughs> Right, if you've been in the business for three years in real estate and you still don't think you know it all, you're still a junior. You're a junior in real estate school kind of thing. If you've been in it five years, cool, congratulations, now you're in, in, in uh, working towards your master's degree. But right now, if you're in your first year, you're a freshman all over again. Okay? So invest in yourself. And by the way, the best part a lot about what we do, there's no cost to it. You just got to go and plug in and then implement what you learn. You have to pay thousands of dollars and get in debt to do this. And we can make more than doctors. Are you hearing this? I don't have to go to school for eight years or whatever it is. A lot of our agents in the very office are making way more than doctors make. So, let that sink in. Don't, though, warning, warning, as much as this is important, do not let yourself become a professional student. 
Gary talks about it in the Millionaire Real Estate Agent book. There's a difference between learning for learning's sakes and learning for doing sakes. Just saying. <laughs> Does that make sense to you guys? So if I, it's like, Jake, dude, you told me to be engaged. I'm here. I'm everything. But hey, look, there's, I, I appreciate that. But there's still an element to it where you got to go do something. <laughs> and then they say, like, you know, you can have the smartest bookshelf of all time if you have all these books that you supposedly read. But if you don't do anything with it, what good is it? Okay. Just kind of throw that in there as much as we stress it. Okay. Whatever. Track your business. or <laughs> You know I'm passionate about this one. Track your business early and often. I want you to think of yourself as a CEO. You're starting a business. Did you know that? <laughs> you're an independent contractor. You're, you're the CEO. CEOs know the numbers. Good ones. They know their numbers. They monitor the health of their business. So part of our coaching program is you're sending your numbers every week, and we can talk about that and everything. But not all agents do it. It bugs the heck out of me. And I relate it to health. Okay, so if you, let's just say, like my mom, she's on... Uh, uh, blood pressure medication. So every day in the morning she has to take a blood pressure pill and, and it's so important to her health. She wouldn't dare miss that, right? It's scheduled. It's time blocked. It's part of her habit and routine in the morning. You with me? So why, I, I, I just never be able to do it. I can never justify why an agent wouldn't want to or make it a habit to report their numbers or track their numbers, okay? That is 100% the health of your business, just like the health of you. Scheduling taking that pill in the morning. So I can I can accept the fact if it's all zeros and you had a terrible week or whatever, no problem. I can coach that. But I can't justify and I cannot help you if you're not willing to track and, and send your numbers in. Not to appease me, it's for you. It's for the accountability part of things. So that's my rant on that. But to know where you're going, you gotta know where you've been. Right? We can learn a lot of history, and I can give example after example. And one quick one that I always share is, is anybody in the room know Ryan and Heather Bigger? Yeah, the Biggers? Okay. You know who they are? So they're, they're one of the big success stories, coaching program and everything. And, um, long story short, I can total, because I memorized the numbers. So since the beginning of time, last September 2016, since they've been working with me, they've reported 2,567 contacts made. Total over all those months, 2,567. So then I total all of their appointments, buyer appointments and listing appointments, and the number was 86. So what I do is 2,567 divided by 86, the number was 30. And I'm getting ready to geek out with you here. Why is that important? So what I can say there in that example is for every 30 conversations they have, they get an appointment. Isn't that cool? And I'm not done yet. But isn't that cool? You see how that might help you? So if I know for my monthly objective, I need X number of appointments, those were seven. Seven times 30 is 210. They bet they knew this. They better not report a month to me less than 210 contacts made. Which by the way, divided by 20 working days is about 10 contacts a, a day, which is what Ignite teaches us to do. Fascinating. So then I can do the same exercise, and I did, for total pieces of business. Buyer contracts written, listings taken. The number there was 54, so the number worked out to be 48 to 1. For every 48 conversations they had, they got a piece of business. That's another important number to know. And here's one more geek out mode. So let's say, because remember that 48 number. You with me? So in our market, let's just pretend an average sales price of $200,000. Right? At a 3% commission that goes to you, that's a $6,000 check. The gross commission income of $6,000. So those of you math majors out there, what's 6,000 divided by 48? I'll tell you. The number's 125. <coughs> what does that represent? This is huge, y'all. If you can go back slides about when we're talking about lead generation, number two, check this out. I now know, and Ryan and Heather do too, the value of a contact is 125 bucks. In their example, let me say that differently. If they just make 10 contacts a day, they need to see this as their salary. They just make 1,250 bucks, regardless of the outcome. To all 10 people might have said, no, I'm not measuring my success every day because it's a trap you will fall into based on an outcome or a result, at least not at first. I'm going to measure it by my activities, the leading indicators that we know lead to the lacking indicators. 
So, check this one out, one more thing. Will Anderson, who sits right over here, the first time I showed this in a group coaching session, he, he totally got it. I can't make this stuff up. Will, if you're watching, you know I use your example of that. So, uh, to my knowledge to this day, what, what Will did that day, he went right over here somewhere to Wells Fargo. He withdrew $1,000 cash in the form of $100 bills. To this day, to my knowledge, when he's lead generating, he's got that stack sitting right here. He slides himself a $100 bill every time he makes a contact. He's cementing the fact that he's making money regardless if you've got an appointment or a deal today. I get boost. I mean, that's incredible. That's game changer. Change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. Now they go into the generation time, not fearing it, not caring really of the outcome. They know they're making money. The problem with all of us is we live in this popcorn society where we want instant gratification. I explained to you earlier that's not the way this business works. It's a 90 day lag. Okay? So the problem is your bank account just hadn't caught up yet. So you come to me, and I'm not against teams, don't hear this. I'm not against teams, but if you come to me in three months and say, Jake, <laughs> I haven't had my first check. My bank account's dwindling. I think I'm going to go join a team. For all the wrong reasons. Don't hear it this year or this. But because you're looking for hand-me-downs. Okay? I'm going to beat you up over that. Because you're selling yourself short. And you're operating out of scarcity versus abundance. See the bigger picture. Brian and Heather didn't have Jack to show for. Ask them. Their story's incredible. First three or four months, goose eggs. Nothing. And they came to me and said, Jake, we, we may need to make some decisions here. We can't even afford license renewal in January. I said, stay the course. Stay the course. Because they're stand-up people. And what they were reporting to me, I knew, I trusted in them, and I believed in them. It was real. I said, promise me, guys, faith or fear, you choose. Which one is it? Bet on yourselves. And voila, their business exploded. Absolutely exploded. They capped in six months. When they reset, they capped again in two and a half months. Twice in the same year that they cap, and they're brand new to the business. It's incredible. The power of tracking your numbers is how I got on the subject. It allows us to have conversations where we can dissect your business and remove the emotion from the conversation and just see it for what it is. This is a very passionate subject of mine, if you can't tell. <gasps> He's like, well, Joe, sure. take it over. <laughs> 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 I actually got this from Tammy and Bull uh, last week or the week before. Is a, uh, a business owner not knowing their numbers is like a parent not knowing where your child is. I love that. I saw you posted that. Yes. Yeah. I mean, she said that. I did this. <laughs> and so, but then I followed it up with. How many of you have children? <laughs> right. <laughs> like, right. How embarrassing would it be? Yeah. I actually don't know where my child is. I have no idea. I mean, yeah. that's embarrassing. Yeah. So, I mean, that's how powerful that question. statement is. That's huge. That's awesome. Um, okay, so we've hit on this one already, but this is a sec. This is one of its own. What are we on now? Treat your business like a business. Number 10. i got to move it faster here. All right. Um, treat it like business. Business or a hobby? I'm okay with either. If you come into this and say, Jake, I, it's your second career for me. You know, I want to close 10 homes. That's okay. Don't mishear this now. But I am saying for those of you who say, I want to go at this and go at it hard and make six figures and blah, blah, blah. Are you treating it like a business? How are you choosing to show up? Are you, are you, if you want to make $100,000, do you have $100,000 habits that someone who earns $100,000 has? In other words, I just did this breakdown the other day in our Locker Nation page. That's about four hundred dollars a day. Yeah. Maybe you saw how I got there. Two fifty. Yeah. Are you showing up as a person who's earning four hundred dollars a day? If not, you're not on pace to make hundred thousand dollars. Okay. So the purpose of business, Danny, is to fund your perfect life, follow a routine, set a schedule. That is huge. Um, some of you, as I said earlier, I'm not accusing. I'm just general terms. None of you, I hope. Uh, you know, may choose this whole freedom and flexibility thing over working. Uh, if you need help with your morning routine because you're a self-proclaimed, I'm not a morning person, read some books. Maybe the uh, Miracle Morning would be a good start or something like that. It'll, it'll get you in a routine, a habit. Right now, if you are working somewhere with a boss, you probably set your alarm at the same time every day. You get in the shower, you brush your teeth. We, get, we do all of this. A book called The Power of Habit is fascinating to me because it talks about triggers. We just don't know what we don't know. We've become so oblivious. It's like Groundhog Day. And so, for example, if you say, Jake, you know, 
I'm really struggling in the mornings because I'm not a morning person. And I wake up at the right time, but gosh, time just slips by and I don't get here to the office until 11. I don't know what's wrong with me. Humor me and walk me through exactly what you do in the morning is what I'm going to have you do. And here's an example. Maybe you wake up, you uh, go take your shower, you get ready to do the whole thing. And then you spend some quiet time in the chair and think, and you're doing all the right stuff. But then what happens is you go turn on the coffee machine. And once you turn on the coffee machine, you plop your butt in, in the chair and that's where you get stuck. This book called The Power of Habit says, reverse engineer this. Is it in fact, as subtle as it may be, the fact that you turned on the coffee machine, which habitually led you to the chair, and therefore you didn't come to the office? If you just change the one thing, which is stop pushing the coffee machine on, that might have disrupted the entire pattern to follow. You with me? Did that amazing? This like philosophy stuff again, man. And this was real for me because. I was operating off of a tool called 411, which is an accountability tool, and everything in my job, my business, my financial, was I was nailing it. But the other section over here called personal, nothing. And at the time, if my wife is watching this, it was scary times, because she was accusing that she had a roommate. She had a roommate. I would take my laptop home, I'd plop it on my lap, sit in bed, oh hey, oh hey, until 2 in the morning, I just work, because I'll, I'll work, I like it. And then some of that started happening. I'm just being, again, I'm going to be real with you in return. And so I had to really take a hard look at that. Don't know where that would have led, but what I stopped doing, you guys, I stopped taking that home. Till this day, I don't take it home. I changed the behavior. I disrupted the pattern. Now I'm present when I'm home. I can enjoy time with my wife. I can enjoy time with my kids. And I don't have to take work home with me because I made a choice to do something silly as not take my laptop home. So I wasn't tempted to do that. Isn't that interesting? It's real. So follow a routine. Would you hire yourself? Mm -hmm. And I said the other thing. All right. We talked about this, so we can kind of speed up through this one, but associate with like-minded people. This was what I was saying earlier about the average of the top five people. Kind of the same topic here, but it deserves a, a, a leg to stand on its own. Who your business matters. I said the Simon Sinek thing. If you like that quote, there it is. You can write that down. Okay, I knew it was going to show up somewhere here. There's truth. <laughs> who you're around, there's two types of people. I don't know. Let's cut through the BS. Right here. Those who build you up and those who tear you down. There is no in between. They're either building you up or they're drinking their haterade and they're a hater and they're going to try and tear you down. Just because someone gave up on their dream does not give them the right or the permission to talk to others. And I'm going to share this tomorrow in our little something that we're doing. I'm going to share the five things that uh, baseball had taught me about real or, um, business success. And um, long story short, I'll give you the abbreviated version. In my sophomore year, we all have these defining moments, right? So my sophomore year of high school, and it may seem like nothing to you, but it was a big deal to me. I had this dream. Now, I, I grew up in a really, really small town, rural area of Illinois. We had 200 kids in the entire high school. Nobody did ever done anything athletically. Just a little, little speck on the map. Had to go 30 minutes for a Walmart or McDonald's. There was nothing, okay? So, um, but I have this, you know, thing. I want to play professional baseball, okay? Well, sophomore year, we were at a playoff game, and, and a typical Midwest storm starts blowing through, and the coach, our coach was ranting and raving and get the equipment, and let's go inside, and the end game ended up getting postponed for the next day. Well, as we're all huddled up, soaking wet in the gym, He's just yelling, ripping everybody a new one, and I still to this day don't know what his deal was, but it doesn't matter. He finally got to me, and he put his finger right in my face in front of my, all my team. He said, none of you will ever see the inside of a college or pro stadium unless you buy a ticket. Verbatim, those were his words. Etched into my memory, like, and I'm like, whoa. And at that point, choice, road, right? Build you up, tear you down. Just said, you know what? Coach, you're probably right, man. Nobody's ever done anything here. So I Go on that path and believe them and farm with my family. <laughs> you know, that's what we do. But no. No, no, no. I'm going to take that and I'm going to show that turd. And I think they're wrong, but I'm going to show them what's wrong. Okay? So I didn't play basketball anymore. And you see my height. That wasn't the popular choice of the community at the time. But I went all in. All in with baseball. And I was going to do something with it. And long story short, I played college and professional baseball. It's all up. We'll see. So thanks, Coach. But what that gift actually did was it lit the flame, man. And now I don't I have that burning passion inside of me for every single one of you not to ever poo-poo on your dreams. 
I will never be that person that says you can't do something. That's why I get so fired up to be a coach and obsessed with your success because we've all been there where somebody told us we can't do something. And then if you do it anyway, it's like, yeah. And then move. <laughs> so. <clears throat> Master listening presentations. Pretty simple. You list to last. You talk to any experienced agent in this business, they're going to tell you, you list to last. Now, sure, there's nothing wrong with working with buyers, but buyers are more time consuming and more headache. Love you, mean it. So listings is where we want to. And by the way, if you get a listing and it's properly marketed and properly priced, you're bound to get a buyer from it. It's the easiest way to get buyers because of your signs and advertising. So Gary talks about the three L's of real estate. You can read them right here. Leads, listings, leverage in that order. We've already talked about the importance of leads. So now it's listings. And that is the ultimate form of leverage. Or if I get enough of those listings, I can bring in more leverage in the form of hiring a talent to be part of my organization. So that's the three L's of, list of um, real estate. Why would you want to wing it? So we're talking about mastering, not just familiarizing, not just being okay at it. Why would you want to wing it or practice on a real client? So remember earlier when I gave you the five job descriptions? One of that, the last one was script and role play, er day. <laughs> I said er. Um, yeah, I don't know about you, but I'm going to practice on you, and if I screw up, no big deal, and you're going to practice on me. So that when I get ready for game time, I'm sharp. Have you ever seen those post-game interviews with athletes that's like LeBron James and all these people? Let me use baseball because I'm a baseball guy. It's the bottom of the ninth. World Series championship game, game seven, bottom of the ninth, two out, bases loaded, full count. Guy pitches out of it. And in the post-game interview, they're talking to him, and he might say something like, I was under no pressure. In my mind, I'd been there a thousand times. That ever happened to you? It's like, oh man, I've, I've played through this scenario a million times in my mind. So now that I'm actually in it, here we go. Just throw the pitch. Done. We win. Right? That's this. Diana, what did you help me? Uh, was it 160? Last year? Yeah. 162 appointments took 160. Okay. Could you imagine going on 162 listing appointments? True story and taking 160 of them. And she knew, like clockwork, what was her average appointment? 26 minutes or something like that? <laughs> Timed it, scripted, boom, bang, boom, done, and she won 160 of them. Wow, and you will think for a hot minute that doesn't take practice and time and energy to dedicate to your craft. You're mistaken. Don't just get out there and wing it and hope for the best. Practice, get with a partner, right? Uh, yeah, hey, if we are in sales, we can all agree that yes, at the end of the day, we are sales. Anything that I'm selling, I have to have a product. I have to manufacture a product. So for you to be, in essence, a true salesperson, the way we manufacture a product and bring it to the market, it's called a listing. And by the way, if you don't get listings and you're only representing buyers in that case, then you're depending on somebody else for your business. I don't know how you feel about that. I don't feel comfortable. Does that make sense to you? Master listening presentations. Master scripts and objection handlers. Now we're getting it there. So do scripts carry a negative connotation with you? Why or why not? We hit on that earlier, right? Labels. What is your? What happens when I say the word script? I want you to interrogate reality of what did you just respond with in your mind? You don't have to share. But I've asked you to be open about that. Scripts are not telemarketer. And I sound like a robot and blah, 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 blah. Okay? It's a roadmap for you to get the out desired outcome that you want to get. So you need to memorize them to the point where that you can internalize them. And then and only then have you earned the right to customize them in your own little words and things. All right? And that's all done through practice. <coughs> Scripts absolutely bring confidence. Oh, there I did it. Uh, what it. Okay, so here's the thing. Most of you, you'll learn, if you haven't already, there's probably five key objections in anything that we do. If I was a team leader recruiting, man, I could. I know what you're going to say. I'm happy where I'm at, and blah, right? So wouldn't it make sense for that and or for you, what are the core objections you might hear at a listing appointment? Will you reduce your commission? Right? 
what makes you different or why wouldn't I just do a FISBO versus you got you can think through that. And it would, it would be wise of you to rehearse and script and, and roll through what your response would be like. So, boom, you got it. Rolls off the tip of your tongue. It makes you look like a professional, like you know what you're doing, which gives me confidence as a potential client of yours. I used to hate, I used to fear objections in a big way. I only sold one home with Keller Williams in any, uh, anyway. Before I became a team leader, I sold one home. That's my claim to fame. I'm like, you want me to come interview for what? And, and run this market? Come on. And I'm supposed to go recruit 20 and 30 and 40 million dollar producers when I sold one home. I was that little drunk monkey sitting right here on my shoulder saying, you can't do that, big boy. You're crazy. You sold one home. But what I quickly realized, if I know the MRA book, I can recruit anybody. I can coach anybody. And now I've learned to love object handlers because I got a rebuttal for everything. Yes, my wife will say, you got to stop coaching me. Stop asking questions. She drives me crazy. I just, I tell her I get paid to ask questions for a living. So come on. So ask better questions. Don't allow people to outscript us. Here's an example. That's my reminder. So uh, no offense, I mean, some bold scripts are incredible and ignite scripts, but I think we can take it another level once you've established yourself in those. So for example, instead of just asking questions like, hey, who are you looking to buy, sell, or invest in real estate? I'm going to go back to the example earlier. I believe in the REF, the reticular activating system. And if I'm specifically lead generating for um, listings, for example, why do people sell homes? Probably because there's a life event going on. They got married, they got divorced, they had a baby, kids are now in college, so they're looking to downsize, work promotions. There's life events. So when I ask the question, hey, who do you know looking to buy, sell, or invest? No offense, but a lot of times you're going to get back. I can't think of it right now, but boy, Joe, when I do, you know I'll keep you in mind. Great. End of conversation. There's literally nothing I can I just allowed somebody to outstrip me when they didn't go through all the pain and hustle that I had to go through to get licensed. Makes me look like a, you know, I'm not, I'm not well equipped to handle that. So what if, I'm just going to throw this out there, I ask life event questions. Hey, Joe, you know, who do you know looking to, um, or I'm sorry, who do you know right now that just had a baby? Does anybody come to mind that, you know, as you're scrolling through Facebook, mm -hmm. anybody come to mind that just had a child? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Hey, would you, who, who would that be? Oh, just Sarah, yeah. Sarah, Sarah. Sarah. Sarah yeah. Okay, cool. So would you do me a favor and connect me with Sarah? Just a soft introduction, no big deal, because in the event that she may or may not have an upcoming real estate need, I want to be that agent that she can turn to and, and trust. Sure, yeah. Cool. Send you a couple. Awesome. It's a life event. And by the way, even if she then says, I can't think of anybody, what happens is because of the RAS, she goes home and she's scrolling through Facebook. She's like, huh, well, that's weird. Seems like everybody I'm Facebook friends with just had a baby. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm high-fiving Joe there because you did that. Or I did that. Whoever's asking who questions here. I did that. <laughs> I planted in Joe's mind the trigger to, to look. And Timmy, I keep calling you, but give us the bold okay. thing. Two, two million pieces of confetti thing. What's mm -hmm. that? Your brain can grab 134 pieces of two million that come at you every second. Every second, two million bits of information are attacking us right here and now. And 130 what? Four. 134 is what I can grab if it was confetti falling from the sky. So unless I'm specifically looking for it in my conscious or subconscious mind, I'm not going to find it. Mm -hmm. Another example of this with using the, excuse me, the RAS is how many of you have bought a new car off the lot and it's the only one, it's the only color, and you're driving off that line? Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Vroom, vroom, vroom. They're everywhere. Everybody drives that. That's what I'm getting at. Same thing. If you can understand that in sales, I'm not being manipulative. I'm being smart with my questions to prompt what could be a trigger that somebody has an upcoming real estate need because it's a life event. Just making sense. I'm coaching now, but I'm giving you some insights on that. Okay. All right, cool. Know your local market better than anybody else. Uh, moral of the story there is know your market better than anybody else. <laughs> you got to spend time in it daily. You know, when you get access to that MLS, just study it. Be a student of the game. Understand. Start with your neighborhood. How many homes sold last month in my neighborhood? What was the cost per square foot? What was the average days on market? Just find something and start learning the MLS and, and, this, and the data. And then you combine that with getting out there and doing previews, which we, we track during Ignite, 
you get to have a pretty intimate knowledge of the market. So why that's important, number one, breeds confidence. Number two, when you are in dialogue with somebody about real estate, when they ask, hey, how's that real estate thing? You're not saying, oh, it's good. It's good. That's boring. You're not gonna, that's boring. Instead, you might be able to start off some sort of stat and make you look like a champ because I want you to be the local economist of choice to your database. But that, okay, not that. Set goals. <laughs> So this is like not intelligent test here. Set goals. Have a goal. A goal that's not written down is merely a wish. It literally does not exist in this world. I don't even want you to type it. I want you to physically write your dang goals down because that's just like you signing a contract. Now if, if you believe in the laws of attraction or not, now it exists in this universe. And maybe just maybe that level will attract it to your life. Probably not. Stop being realistic and be and I'm sorry. Stop being realistic and reasonable. I, I'm not people hate. I despise those words. <laughs> I, I, I hate those words. <laughs> I don't want you to be realistic. I don't want you to be reasonable. Who gets to determine what that is? Mm -hmm. And a lot of times your parents might say this. Oh, honey, you're being, you're being unreasonable. You're being you're not being realistic. Just just tone it down. Well, golly, you know I don't, I wouldn't say that to my kids. I don't want them to grow up being average. Hey, Ava, just go ahead and plan on being mediocre, being average the rest of your life. Like, are you kidding me? What, what sane parent would say that to their kid? So why were, why were you saying that to yourself? The most important conversation that goes on every day is right here in your own mind. Watch out what you're saying. You've got to have goals. I want you to be unrealistic. I want you to be unreasonable. Who gets to decide what that is? What is the other quote? Everything's impossible instead of somebody, until somebody does it. Impossible hat says I'm impossible. Um, have we become conditioned? Okay, this is not going to get on a tangent, but this is my belief system. I believe, if I were to ask you many, many moons ago, some of you, um, hey, what do you want to be when you grow up? Imagine the 10 year old version of yourself right now. What do you want to be when you grow up? I know I said maybe things like, I want to be an astronaut, I want to be a professional baseball player, I want to be a teacher, I want to be a veterinarian, or whatever it is, okay? We can learn a lot from children because they have that playful heart. You know I think? They don't, they're not growing up. But I think what happens is as we grow up, because we hear the words so much, we become conditioned to it. And we stop believing, we stop dreaming, we stop setting goals, and we just settle. Well, what happened to that little childlike faith that you got inside of you somewhere? And it's still there. C.S. Lewis said, you're, you're never too old to set a new goal or have a, a dream a new dream. I don't care where you're at, how old you are, it doesn't matter. Go for it. So bring that inner child back and just freaking go for it. And I'm listening to a book called A More Beautiful Question, and they say research shows between ages two and five, on average, this out, I think the number was 400,000 times a child will hear the word no. No way. <laughs> no way. <laughs> Um, that's astonishing to me. And so we condition our children to stop asking questions and start challenging what reality or things are. I know that's deep, Get philosophical again, but just consider that. Okay? Set goals. There's no limits. A lot of you might set a goal and it's like, well, I don't want to set myself for a disappointment, so I want to be realistic in my first year of real estate. Dude, I don't, who cares? Blow the, blow the cover off, right? Uh, reverse engineer your business plan, we can chuck it down. Success is boring. I said that earlier. Commit to the process. You gotta keep your goals in front of you, by the way. It's not enough to just set them and forget them and not never look at them again. Things like vision boards, things like you may have your goal uh, taped up to the mirror in your bathroom so you see it every morning staring at you. Okay? I'm a log cabin on a lake in the mountains kind of guy, and that image is etched until I have it. <laughs> that is it's just important to me for, for my children and lifestyle and stuff. So I got to keep that in front of me because it gets me rubbed out. Time blocking, we're almost done, I promise. Uh, so this is critical, mission critical, capital word, yep. If I say yes to something, check this out. If I say yes to something, that means I'm saying no to something else. What is it? You have to have, you got to be aware. So sometimes we get in a little, hey Jake, you got a minute? If that's you, I love you. 
love you guys. If that's you, I'm going to ask back, is it really a minute or is it more like 20? Because I'm actually in the middle of doing my one thing right now. So can you come back in 20 minutes? Can you shoot me an email? Or when can we get something on the calendar so I can give you my undivided attention? Because I love you, but I love my family even more. And I'm committed to doing this right now for my family. By the way, why are you lead generating for yours? <laughs> that might be what that sounds like. But I'm just saying. I'll genuinely let you know. Okay? Is it really a time blocking issue? I don't think so. I really don't. We all know how to time block. Are you kidding me? It's from 9 to 10, I'm going to do this. I think for a lot of us, it's, it's, it's respecting the calendar. It's honoring the integrity of doing what you said you were going to do. And deeper than that's why just plain and simple a priority management issue. What I said earlier, the to-do, the should-do, and the must-do list, it's all scrambled for most people. So if we can isolate what are the priorities, time blocking becomes simple. You slap it up on there and you just do it. And when time's up, you move on to the next thing. This is my belief system, and I shared this actually today in a coaching plan. And I believe you get to determine how often I do it at a month at a time. For many of you, you might do it on a Sunday night for the upcoming week. But I believe you should put family time and vacation time first, period, end of story. God, family, business. Okay? Then, I believe it's events and immovable commitments. You could cycle lead generation up there, not to confuse you, but that should be an immovable object. If it's a team meeting or your coaching appointment or you want to go to bowl or family reunion, like, those are things I cannot move. I can't change it. So that is going to count. Then, this is where I throw people for a loop a lot of times. I believe you should have predetermined appointment slots. You do too. Okay, cool. Right here. That's, nobody's ever like, said, yeah, me too. Oh, no, no. Seriously. Absolutely. Okay, love it. Thank you guys. So, what would it look like if every day you had two options? So, now when that buyer calls you and they say, hey, Joe, I want to go look at this property, what are you doing right now? Most agents, choop, they're out the door. You're letting your clients control your life. And then you're going to come to me complaining that you have no life and you're overworked. True. Okay. Instead, you can respond with, because you don't owe them a justification. Hey, you know what? I'm so excited. I can't wait to, uh, to work with you. I'm actually in the middle of an appointment right now. The appointment might be I'm at a soccer game with a kid, by the way. Seriously. But, and what about 2 o'clock today or 11 o'clock tomorrow? Which one of those works best for you? The only way I can say that with confidence is by having predetermined appointment slots that I can offer them. I'm in control, but they feel like they're in control because I gave them a choice and they got to decide. That's how the human brain works. <laughs> so I think that's next. And then everything else, whether it's the follow-up or just <coughs> licking envelopes and sending handwritten, whatever it is, follows up. And I, for me, I have on my counter flex time. Because some days, I just want to sit there and stare at the window. I just need these 30 minutes just to... Other days, that's my time to serve Facebook, respond to emails, whatever it may be. But just call it flex time. You don't need to overcomplicate this and outline every little thing you're going to do, but get at least the most important stuff on there. Uh, yeah, there's never enough time of the day to do everything, but there's always enough time to do the most important things. What are they? And then I said that earlier about the dog and the homework thing. Live in abundance, not scarcity. This is number 17 out of 19 for those of you keeping score. We're doing all right. Um, <clears throat> it will always begin with mindset. I don't care what you say. It's mindset. Mindset, mindset. Are you living in faith or fear? Reasons or results can't have both. Are you allowing fear to make all your decisions? And by the way, faith versus fear, both are believing in something that you cannot see. So what you're going to choose? Uh, we're not, oh my god, this is one of my favorites. We're not a product of our circumstances. We are a product of our decisions and our actions. Define the sign because this is one of my favorite things to talk about. I got this from Tony DeSello. If you look at the core word, decide, literally, C I D E, side itself, what does that mean? To cut off, to kill off, cut off, whatever. So what are some words with side in it? Pesticide, insecticide, suicide, blah, 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 side. It literally means to kill off or to cut off. So here's where I use that as a coach. Guys, you're just a decision away. You're one, this may seem hokey pokey to you, but it's true. You're one decision away from having everything you want in this life and fulfilling your greatness. Make a decision. 
And here's what I know. The compound effect is how I do this is if I win the decision in the moment and I decide, right? Coach telling me I can or can't. Decide in the moment. If I win the decision in the moment, all those added up means I won the day. If I win the day, I win the week. If I win the week, I win the month. If I win the month, I win the quarter. If I win the quarter, I win the year. It all happens in the moment of the decision. I don't care what you say. So, Jake, my goal is to make 10 contacts a day. Okay. I can't stand over your shoulder 24 hours a day. So I'm going to scout's honor here. But what if you pulled up just short of the line? And you said nine. Because it's just been a long day. And that one extra phone call, I'll probably get voicemail anyway. For all you know, that one voicemail or one extra call could have led to a million dollar listing. We don't know. And we'll never know because you didn't do it. You pulled up just short of the line. 212 degrees is another way of saying that. Some of you have seen this video. 211 degrees, I'm sorry, 212 degrees is the boiling point of water. At 211, it's just really, 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 really hot water. You crank it up that extra degree, what happens? It starts bubbling, it starts boiling. Boiling water produces steam, steam can power a locomotive. What's that one extra call, one extra ounce of effort going to do for you? And if you pull up, pull up short from the line, we'll never know. Stay committed. Decide. Okay? What do they say is character? Character, definition of character is doing what, I'm sorry, it's, it's in the moments of when nobody can see you, what do you decide to do? When nobody's watching, what do you decide to do? Ah, coach will never know. If I made 10 contacts, I'm still going to report it, but he'll not know if I did 10 or 9, or any for that matter. And you're right, I won't. Doesn't hurt me, it hurts you. Oh, good Lord, don't get me started on that one. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be here all night. Create vision for your business. Just moral of this one, you guys, begin with the end of mind. I don't want you reinventing yourself and reinventing your business along the way. Cast the vision with yourself as best as you can. I know there's a lot that I just don't know what I don't know kind of talk going on, but um, you got to have a vision. What's this about? What's the greater purpose? Do you want to attach it to a charity? Uh, I mean, what's, what do you want this to look like in 5, 10, 20 years down the road? Whatever that is, it begins now. The time's going to pass anyways, so I might as well make use of that time. Last one, but certainly not least, know your big why. This we could talk all night on, but I won't do it. Just ask yourself, what gets me out of bed? Before my feet hit the floor, what am I about to do, do this for? It's for my kids. Is it to prove somebody wrong? Is it to get out of debt and have some financial freedom? Whatever it is. You've got to know your big why. I would even say it's your desperate why. Your why has got to make you cry. It's got to be that emotional to you. It's not enough to say, Jake, it's about the money. No, 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 it's not. What is it? We've got to dig. We've got to dig. Why is that my why? Why is that my why? Keep asking why, 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 until you finally arrive at it, and it should be ugh, painful. And a lot of times I share this in career nights, too. I kind of reference that little guy or whatever that is up there, a speaker or something, that I, my attempt, one of, one of my ways that I, that I fulfill my big why for my children is that if that's a camera up there and little Ava, who's three years old, and Addie is two years old, they're watching Daddy at home right now, am I making them proud? Am I role modeling behavior that I want them growing up doing? And boy, oh boy, if I just decided to not make that extra call, what did I just show? You never know who's watching. Okay? It's got to hit you. And it's got to wake you up and rattle your cage enough to say, you know what? I could have got it out, get out of my own way, get over myself, stop stroking my ego, and go make them 10 calls. Okay. Um, yeah. When the why's big enough, the how doesn't matter. You'll do whatever it takes. What does they give an example in bold that if your kid was, I don't know, yeah, you can tell better than I can, but the, the, somebody kidnapped a kid or they're in a burning building or something, what is that? You don't have to say it, but. Yeah, they're, they're on a, um, you're on the top of one 20 story building, building rather, and they're on the top of the other. That building's on fire. We're going to put a 10 inch wide board between the two buildings. How many of you would walk across the board to go get them? Not even a question. <laughs> no, like, yeah. I'm over there, baby. I'll cross that freaking board as fast as you. Yeah. Why? <clears throat> because it's attached to something that you're willing to endure the pain, the sacrifice, do whatever it takes to achieve. Saving your kid from a fire. That's got to, something in there has got to 
stirring you up so much that when I'm faced looking at that phone that looks like it weighs 10,000 pounds, I'm going to pick it up anyway. I'm just going to do it. Because after the first one or two calls, by the way, you get your rhythm. Right? Easy stuff. You keep asking why this is my wife. Logic makes people think. Emotion makes people act. Man, oh man, if you can understand that, you can sell anything, but I won't get into that. Uh, halftime. It's a good quote from that book called Halftime. He says, if the first uh, half of your life was a quest for sickness, I'm sorry, sorry. If the first half of your life was a quest for success, then make the second half of your life a quest for significance. Ooh. It's not about you. What legacy do you want to leave? What people do you want to impact? How do you want to serve your community? How do you want to give back to your church? Whatever, whatever, whatever. Do you want to be known for living a life of success or living a life of significance? The people you've helped and inspired along the way. That's what that's about. Are you choosing to play all in? Mm -hmm. Are you playing to win or are you playing not to lose? Massive difference. Faith or fear is an easier way of saying that. <laughs> There's no participation trophies in real estate, by the way, and I have to throw that in there because all that crap going on with participation trophies. You're either going to sink or swim on your own actions and habits or not. No coach, no team leader, no accountability partner can do this work for you. It's all up to you, which is awesome and scary at the same time. If you're willing to own successes in your business, then you better be willing to own the not-so-good days either, or also. Okay? So, I would take questions, but it's late. Was this of value to you? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Good. What, let's do in typical Keller Williams fashion, I want at least three ahas. What did you hear tonight that really resonated with you? And then we can wrap up. Somebody. Now's not the time to be shy. <laughs> Come on, I'm ready to get out of here too. It's hot. <laughs> Faith or fear? Yes. Faith or fear? Okay, good. All written down is merely a wish. Ooh. I like that. Okay, thank you. What else? What else did you hear? Your why has to make you cry. Oh, I, I, I looked over at you. I know that one hits you too. I was going to say anything. That's good. Anybody else? Let me stop three on Because here's what's interesting. Everybody in this room heard the same information, but how you filtered it and what you interpreted from it, totally different. So by you sharing your aha moment may hit somebody else in a totally different way. So mm -hmm. I'm just, I want to give everybody, I'm not going to call on anybody, but anybody else want to share what, what you got out of this? Just, just be a business owner from day one. Yeah. That's it. Day one. Yeah. yeah. Isn't this so much more than just selling homes though, too? Oh, so much. I mean, everything we just talked about is yeah. life. Personal growth journey. <laughs> well, when you're, saying not, when you're saying not looking at the money as a coach, yeah. you see the GCI and what every agent makes, right? And we and we coach around that. I don't even see the GCI of money. Yeah. I see it as changing folks' lives. That's right. And what they can do with that. That's right. Because I know everybody's big why. Yeah. Every agent we coach represents a family at home. Yeah. That's that's so awesome. huge. Yeah. So awesome. yeah. Cool. All right, guys. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for coming. I know it's late, and I appreciate you hanging in here with me. I, I hope this was of value to you and may give you a better sense of what the real life in real estate is like versus just what you're learning in class. So. Jake, do a great job. Yeah. Oh. Thank you. I appreciate it. Better shut this bad boy off.